As many of you surely know, Donald Trump is a terrible candidate for many reasons. His contempt for democratic norms, his racism and xenophobia, his cognitive decline, his felony convictions, all of these render him completely unfit to serve. Period. Trump's first term was a disaster. Project 2025 suggests a second term would be even more extreme and horrifying. But one of the most singularly disqualifying aspects of Donald Trump's candidacy is something I'm afraid we've become numb to over time, and that's Trump's stance on climate change, which he has repeatedly called a hoax. That's not just a casual remark, it's a dangerous rejection of reality. After experiencing devastating back to back hurricanes impacting millions of Americans, climate change denial really should be viewed as an urgent disqualifier. If we were living in a rational society, the climate emergency would dominate national discourse. But instead, issues like immigration at the southern border continue to take center stage, including phrases like they're eating the cats, they're eating the dogs, even though the impact of climate change is far reaching and affects everyone, Democrats and Republicans and independents alike. And yet it gets pushed to this sort of back burner year after year. We see new records for extreme weather events and they're getting worse and more frequent. According to NOAA, climate related disasters are costing the U.S. billions each year. Those will only escalate if we stay down this path of inaction. It's a national security issue that the military considers important. Every disaster we face today should be a reminder of what's to come. But instead of mobilizing to address this issue, Trump and other MAGA Republicans just keep denying the very existence of the crisis, sometimes even saying things like, oh, it's nice when it's warmer weather or more beachfront property would be a good thing. They would rather prioritize corporate profits over the planet's health and the welfare of their own children and grandchildren. And when you look at Project 2025, you should be particularly alarmed. Not only would Project 2025 promote more fossil fuel extraction, but it would also defund FEMA. It would cut, cut disaster uh, response programs, even as these extreme weather events are becoming more common and more severe. Imagine being in the path of a hurricane, unable to get timely forecasts because Trump wants to privatize hurricane tracking, making it a pay for service model. The economic consequences of ignoring climate change are staggering. In Florida, homeowners insurance has gone up 60 percent since 2019, largely because of the region's vulnerability to hurricanes that have grown more intense and more frequent. Even when you do pay for homeowners insurance, your claim might be rejected in the aftermath of a natural disaster like Hurricane Milton, a trend which we're already starting to see. And it's only going to get worse. The IPCC has been crystal clear. We have to drastically cut carbon emissions if we want to avoid a catastrophic outcome. Even if we were to accept the Republican premise that illegal immigration is the absolute number one issue that deserves to be discussed more than anything else. Just imagine the effects that climate change will have on immigration over the next century. The UN has projected that by 2050, parts of the planet, especially in the tropics and the Middle East, will be uninhabitable due to extreme heat. Where will all of those people go? So even if you're someone who's super concerned about immigration, addressing the climate crisis still should be a top priority. But instead of tackling the crisis, Trump doubles down on fossil fuels. He prioritizes oil and gas, dismisses renewable energy and ridicules wind turbines, even calling them Burv graveyards. They kill the birds. You want to see a Burv graveyard? You just go take a look. A bird graveyard? Go under a windmill someday. You'll see more birds than you've ever seen ever in your life. Trump doesn't just ignore the problem. He makes it worse. His administration dismantled environmental protections to keep air and water clean. He made it clear that health and safety take a backseat to appeasing fossil fuel donors. Democrats are trying, but not doing enough 
Biden has increased federal funding for climate investment, but he also presided over an escalation in fossil fuel production. We've talked about it. Trump's energy independence were more energy independent under Biden in the sense of producing fossil fuels, but it's arguably the wrong direction. Both Biden and Harris value economically thwarting China. So they've undermined our ability to import cheap solar panels and electric cars by putting in tariffs. And as a presidential candidate in 2020, Kamala Harris pitched a $10 trillion climate plan whose public and private investments would have dwarfed the $1.6 trillion estimated federal cost of Biden's major climate, energy, infrastructure and technology legislation. But as a candidate in 2024, Harris has been a little less ambitious as far as that goes. Now, during the VP debate, J.D. Vance dismissed climate change entirely. He called it weird science. But during the same debate, Tim Walls, who does believe in climate change, boasted about those record oil and gas production numbers under the Biden administration as a tool to thwart Trump's talking points. Fine. But as a long term path forward, not so good. The climate crisis is an issue where left and right should be able to work together on solutions in a unifying bipartisan way. And we shouldn't shy away from the kind of bold action that Kamala Harris pitched in 2020. That's where we need to go because the climate emergency is effectively here. Delaying action is a waste of time and it's also a public health crisis. Uh, rising temperatures leading to more heat related illness, respiratory issues from worsening air quality, the spread of malaria and other diseases. The World Health Organization estimates that climate change could cause an additional 250,000 deaths per year from 2030 to 2050, 250,000 per year. Trump's refusal to take climate change seriously is ignorant, but like much of Trump's delusions, it's also deadly. It's not enough to ask why does Trump continue to deny reality? We have to ask why are we as a society tolerating leaders like Trump who not only ignore the climate crisis, but make it worse. And it's not just Trump. According to the Center for American Progress, there are 123 sitting Congress people who think climate change is a hoax. So the denialism isn't just about ignorance. It's also about profit. The recent Republican debates showcase the denial when asked to raise their hands if they believe human behavior is causing climate change. None of the candidates responded. Vivek Ramaswamy openly declared climate change agenda is a hoax, arguing for continuing to use fossil fuels in the name of prosperity. And the result is this uninformed public that ends up feeling powerless in the face of a crisis threatening their very existence. A study from earlier this year found 15 percent of Americans don't even believe climate change is happening, never mind who's causing it or what to do about it. So what does responsible leadership look like in the face of a climate emergency? Number one, we have to acknowledge that we're in an emergency. We don't even have consensus from the Republican Party that there is even change, never mind that it's an emergency. We need leaders who will move away from fossil fuels responsibly. None of us are saying stop the flow tomorrow, but we move away from fossil fuels while investing in renewable energy and the infrastructure required to support it. Trump's anti science agenda isn't just reckless. It's a threat to our future. Trump's policies cater to corporate interests at the expense of public health, at the expense of safety, at the expense of the environment. So if we want to avoid disaster, we need to treat climate change like the emergency it is. That means ending our reliance on fossil fuels, investing massively in renewable energy. It won't be bad for the economy. It will actually be good for the economy if done the right way. And we need to have buy in from the people at the top. Whatever issue these right wingers claim to be concerned about, dealing with climate change would address it. They say they're concerned about immigration. Think of the demand for influx of people that will happen if the displacement in the tropics and the Middle East due to heat takes place. If you care about immigration, you should want to do something about the climate emergency. If your concern is economic, if we can get away from a lot of these inefficient, dirty technologies, often subsidized by the government, 
and move towards clean, renewable energy and all of the jobs that that energy and its required infrastructure would bring, those concerned about the economy would also get what they want. We really can't afford to be passive in the face of this. Denialism isn't just ignorant, it's dangerous. And put everything else aside, put aside the crimes, put aside the incompetence, put aside the cognitive decline, put aside all of the worst things about Trump. Trump's view on climate science alone should completely disqualify him and prevent him from ever being reelected in this country. Will that actually happen? We don't know.